So, a quick recap on the important elements of Seamus Heaney's poetry. He's a likely poet to come up this year, the 2021 exam. He's Irish. Uh, there's an Irish poet on pretty much every year. Don't forget, it's not written down anywhere. There's no guarantee, but if you take the last 20 years of examinations, it's likely to be an Irish poet on. Heaney is the... Um, favorite Irish poet to come up because he hasn't been examined in a very long time and uh, Bolan was on last year and Durkin was on recently. Now that's not to say that one of those two or both of those poets won't come up this year but Heaney is a good poet to prepare if you're preparing for studied poetry. You need to prepare a selection of his poems. If you had me full time I looked at six poems. Mossbond Sunlight, The Constable Calls, Tallinn Man, The Harvest Bow, Postscript, and The Underground. You need to have four or five of those poems prepared well. Sorry, not of those poems. Four or five poems by Heaney that are on the prescribed course. You can do a selection of those poems, maybe one or two of those poems with different poems that your teacher's done with you, but you need to have four or five poems prepared. When you're thinking about Heaney, when you're thinking about all these poets, you have to think about theme and language and the reason you do is because that's what the question will require you to comment on okay so when we think about Heaney look at Heaney's poems what does he think about loads of things but family is very important to him love the love he feels the enormous warmth he feels for his aunt Mary so clear in Mossbond Sunlight and the enormous sense of love that he feels for his father is so clear in um, the Harvest Bow so that's an important thematic concern. Think about what does he say about his Aunt Mary in that poem, uh, Moss Bond Sunlight. What, what, what are his feelings for his father in um, the um, Harvest Bow? And where in the poems does he express his feelings clearly um, either through direct language or through indirect figurative language and imagery? He is also really interested in the passage of time and in particular the connection between the past and the present. So again, we look at poems like The Harvest Bow and you have a memory poem. He's sitting in his uh, kitchen. We know that because he talks about the deal dresser and a dresser is a piece of furniture you find in a kitchen. He's sitting in his kitchen and he's looking at the bow. He's a grown man. His father has, has died and he's looking back and he's remembering being a kid walking through the fields with his dad and just feeling happy. So that connection between the past and the present is there in, in poems like The Harvest Bow, Moss Bond Sunlight, but also in poems like The Tall and Man and A Constable Calls. Memory plays a very important role in Heaney's poetry. The passage of time is something he's very interested in and how past events impact upon the present. That's a key thematic concern and something really, really interesting. Uh, if you're ever studying Seamus Heaney's poetry and you look at that, it does make you think about those elements in your own life. Well, it makes me think about them. And Heaney's also a poet of his, you know, society. And he came from Northern Ireland and he grew up there during the 20th century. And it was a place where there was a lot of social division and there was conflict. And he was a writer who, when he was at the height of his uh, um Powers in the 1970s was an Irish writer, an, a nationalist writer from County Derry, who wrote poems that alluded to the terrible events of the Troubles. He doesn't, he's not Paul Durkin, he doesn't confront things, you know, aggressively, but he does write poems concerned with um, violence and concerned with the roots of violence and the impact of violence on communities. And I think the two really good poems that we looked at in my class a constable calls fantastic kind of clever subtle poem <clears throat> that appears to be just this little anecdote about a childhood event but actually has this massive symbolic resonance and and, and importance about oppression and about you know um uh, how a community can be made feel um uh, fearful when it becomes alienated from the powers um, that be in a society and, and it speaks about you know the particular experience of Heaney and his dad but also his broader community and then you think about communities in our world today who feel that sense of isolation and the poetry has this wonderful um, universal thought-provoking appeal you also look at something like 
The Tallinn Man, which is an extraordinary poem. I have to say, I absolutely love The Tallinn Man. Heaney's, Heaney's a, you know, he's one of those poets, you never get tired of Heaney if you like poetry. Because when you go back, there's always more. If you're greedy like me and you're always looking for something else, you go back to those poems. And I taught the Tallinn Man now for, for a lot of years. And every time I go back to it, it just really strikes me what he's saying. You know, when are we going to learn? You know, when are we going to learn that the person sitting up in that tumbrel, you know, with that leather belt around his waist and the noose around his neck is another human being? And when, when he talks about the, um, the, that image of the Tallinn Man at the end of his um of his life and that 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 image of him um uh of the sadness that's in him but also of the relief that his suffering is going to end it humanizes somebody and 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 bringing that into juxtaposition with the images of terrible brutal images of violence from northern ireland and um, with the the, the 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 reference in the second part of the poem to the the brothers dragged up for miles behind the train until their bodies are dismembered extraordinary vivid um, imagery not for the sake of it but to provoke thought about violence and what it actually achieves and how we can look at other communities and other times and histories and think they're barbaric but we can justify our own violence because we think we're doing it for the good of our people and Heaney clearly in that poem is suggesting that if we think that the Iron Age Danish people were ridiculous for thinking that killing a human being would help save the harvest, well, surely any justification for violence is ridiculous. Very thought-provoking. They won't just ask you about his themes, though. They'll also ask about the way he writes, and he needs a narrative poet. You know, um, you, you go to university, study English, you're going to find a lot of people who complicate everything, but simply Heaney tell stories in his poetry beautifully. When you read a Heaney poem, you meet people. You meet the Tallinn man. You meet Aunt Mary. You meet his father. You meet the constable. You meet his wife, you know, in that wonderful poem, The Underground, as they're enjoying their honeymoon, you know, uh, mooning about London. Fantastic. You, you, he brings you to places. He stimulates your imagination. The aesthetic language is extraordinary. I mean, just read Postscript. Just read Postscript and just... You know, you don't even have to try. You're there. You're along the flaggy shore. You're watching the waves crash. You know, your heart is getting blown open by the wonder of the place. Fantastic. His work is atmospheric and he pays attention to detail in a way that can be described as forensic. All these little details that could easily be forgotten or missed. And when you add them in, they just make the, the stories realistic and believable. I mean, the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful ending of um, Moss Bond Sunlight, where he talks about the, um, uh, the, the, um, the measure lost in the, in the meal bin. I can't I'm, I'm struggling to remember the, the, the exact word. Um, um, the um, Tin Smith Scoop, there it is over there. Sorry, I was having a, a moment. But that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful moment, you know, where you're just going, why is he mentioning the Tin Smith Scoop? sunk past its gleam in the meal bin and you realize that he's talking about you know things that we take for granted until we can't find them and then we realize how valuable they are and that's like his aunt mary so those characters we meet are all from his life he his poetry is autobiographical so as i said his aunt mary his dad his wife maura devlin the talent man the ruc constable they're all vividly brought to life in his poetry heaney's poetry <clears throat> i've i've maintained this for a long time now has a Kavanaugh-esque quality. Patrick Kavanaugh, that magnificent, wonderful uh, writer, Irish writer. If you haven't read his poetry, you know, do yourself a favour and read uh, The Hospital by Patrick Kavanaugh or read Can um, Canal Bank Walk by Patrick Kavanaugh. He's an amazing, amazing writer. And Kavanaugh, in his poetry, and again, I'm sorry if I'm simplifying complicated things, but I love to look at things in a kind of a simple way. Kavanagh in his poetry looks at things that we take for granted, ordinary things, like a stick floating in a canal, and looks at the, um, um, the light glinting off the wet stick in the water and just sees beauty that's worth celebrating. And you see echoes of that in Heaney when he's describing the harvest bow. And he's describing his dad's hands, fingers moving somnambulant, uh, you know, um, without thought 
creating this bow when you when you when you see him describing aunt mary's baking and then you know you have this wonderful line where the oven is opened and there's a plaque of heat you know wonderful you know we, we take things for granted you know you take for granted you're always going to be you know with the people that you love and they're always going to be able to you know be there for you and and make you feel loved but they're not always going to be there you know they're not because time moves on and Aunt Mary, when he writes that poem, she's gone. And th when he writes the harvest poem, his father's gone. So those those little things that we take for granted, he celebrates them. And again, the West Clare landscape, if you've ever been to West Clare, I know nobody could ever take it for granted. But I'm sure if you live there, you could. Because you get used to things and it becomes every day he chooses to celebrate these things. And I think that's a wonderfully refreshing aspect of his poetry. There are little quirks in his work i'm just working my way across the map here okay so you should be able to see all of these things and um, he he does use light and darkness imagery in quite a lot of his poetry he does use compound words i've actually mentioned it down here twice i shouldn't have done that you know his he has a habit of adding two words together to make new words and that's kind of an inventive quality in his in his poetry i'm not sure you'd ever mention it in an essay but it's interesting for me the most interesting thing about his style and I suppose you can't say it's necessarily distinct for him, can you? Because all of the great poets do it. But his work has a complex a complexity. His work is layered. You know that terrible cliche, Jesus, try to avoid cliches. But you know that terrible cliche about the onion, you know? You keep on peeling it back, peeling it back, peeling it back, and you find layers. He and his poetry is like that. As I said, my... my I mentioned when I said, talked about the Tallinn man and, you know, 20 years of looking at that poem and I still read it and find new things. Nature imagery. And you see historical and literary allusions in his poetry as well. Um, the um, Underground is a great example of that. The um, um, reference to the story of Orpheus and Eurydice in the Underground. Uh, is, 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 look, you have to figure out what that means so you can understand that poem. And he just alludes to it. So there's an expectation, you know, you know, on us as readers that we will either know that stuff or we have to go and find out. Another great example of that is the, uh, is the, is the reference to the Doomsday Book in, um, in The Constable Calls. And that brings me to quotes to learn. And I have to say, if you went into the Leaving Cert and you knew these eight quotes from Heaney, you'd be in good order. Like the really good student doesn't need to like you've, no student needs to learn the poems off by heart if you want to learn a poem off by heart that's fantastic in fact i love the idea of of, of us living in a society where people are are, are 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 you know aware of poetry and are less you know obsessed with trivial nonsensical unimportant things but and when it comes to your leaving cert you don't need to learn reams and reams and reams of of quotes what you need to do is you need to have very precise you know, an understanding of very precise images and how to talk about them and what they represent and talk about how they're clever and how they communicate things. For example, the ticking of the bicycle. The bicycle ticked, ticked, ticked at the end of the Constable Calls. And the Doomsday Book reference in that poem as well. Very, very, very clever. That sense of, of foreshadowing at the end of that poem. You know, that, that sense that the sound of that bicycle, that repetition of the onomatopoeic, ticked, ticked, ticked. It really does evoke a sense of something, um, you know, an, appro an approaching explosion, a bomb ticking down. And it's a real sense that he's, he's re referring to, you know, all of this mistreatment of a community was going to result in some sort of reaction. He doesn't, he doesn't say that explicitly, but one can infer that from the ending of the poem. The symbolism allows the reader to, you know, to, to, to draw their own conclusion, but he leads you to that. The Doomsday Book reference, a fantastic image, you know, for, for the ledger book that the constable has with him. But the Doomsday Book represents, you know, oppression. The oppression of a people by a conquering power. And that's what he's saying it felt like to be a member of the nationalist community in Northern Ireland when he was a child. There are so many brilliant symbols in Heaney's poetry. Look for them and learn them. Other little philosophical quirks, time shifts. He does jump back and forward in poems, and it can be a little confusing, I have to admit. I remember the first time I read um, uh, The Harvest Bow many moons ago, I found it confusing. I remember the first time I read um, The, the Tallinn Man um, many moons ago, I found it confusing, and both for the same reason. I wasn't sure what the timeline was, and what he does is he often uh, shifts back and forth in time without you know, any 
explanation as to when it's happening or why it's happening to try and create that connection between the past and the present that I think is so important in his work. I think Heaney's poetry can be validly described as philosophical. And again, you know, you're allowed to have an opinion and I'm bloody allowed to have an opinion as well, okay? And I think that Heaney's work is deeply thoughtful and he thinks not just about his own life and his own experiences, but he also thinks about the human experience and the human um the universal experience of human life and that makes it philosophical you know the nature of conflict the source of conflict the purpose of violence uh, um, uh, the importance of family the passage of time and um, um, the, the reality of mortality these are all themes and, and and philosophical concerns when you read a heaney poem you find yourself thinking about those things and it's you know i think fascinating finally it's important to remember that while Heaney's poetry is very, very, very personal, it's also universal. And that's why an alpha like me sitting here, you know, thinking about Heaney can feel that when I'm, when I'm reading Moss Bond Sunlight or when I'm reading um, The Harvest Bow or when I'm reading The Constable Calls, I can think about my own life and my own society and the injustices that I see all around me every day and how privileged I feel to come from the family I come from and how much I love my family and how grateful I am from them, I am for them and how grateful I am for Heaney to remind me not to take them for granted. He's a brilliant writer. If you come up in your leaving cert, the questions that you're going to get asked will be, you know, something like this. You'll always have a um, thematic in, um, aspect rich insights of the human experience and a language aspect, language that is accessible and appealing. So always think about when you're writing your essay, okay, will I go poem by poem? That's perfectly fine. Will I go idea by idea? In other words, you can talk about the insights into the human experience. So you could write f five paragraphs of the importance of family, the passage of time, the, 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 the senseless nature of violence, the fact that human beings repeat their behavior in a cyclical way, which is nonsensical, you know, the, 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 the thrill of love, love of, you know, landscape in postscript, love of, of another human being in, 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 um, in the underground. So, you know, you could go topic by topic like that, or you can go poem by poem, but you have to deal with both aspects of the question and you have your um, thematic part where you have to say why it's rich and rewarding to read these poems and you know think about these insights and then think about what Heaney does that makes his work accessible and appealing and of course what makes Heaney's work accessible and appealing is the combination of his narrative style and his use of symbolism and figurative language for me that's the key so there you go there's a little uh, revision on Seamus Heaney I hope you found that in some way um, useful